Hey, happy Sunday, everybody. So, I wanted to take a few minutes to discuss um, failures, complications, revisions, whatever you want to call them. You know, I posted a, I posted a, a, a case where I had some complications um, this week. And I got a lot of comments. I got a lot of private messages. And um, I think people really appreciated seeing some, some complications. And I know that me, when I go to a course, uh, I love seeing complications because I know that that doctor is being real. <laughs> and I, I always talk about this, but you know, one of the first people who I saw showing a lot of complications is Joseph Kahn. And I've had Joseph on, on my Instagram before, and he's just a fantastic guy, always shows his complications. And what I find from him is that I ended up learning so much from him because of that. And he even showed cases where like, you know, it was from 10, 20 years ago, and he published this in like the biggest journals and then you see the case, you know, 10 years later and it's a total disaster. And so I wanted to, you know, last year or the year before, I wanted to start posting more of, of my complications to make people know that, to let people know that we're all human, we're real people, we, um, you know, can't do everything right all the time. And then the other aspect of that is that we don't control everything. And so in, in my light side course, I talk about something called the triangle of blame. And we go real deep into this in the course. But in the triangle of blame, we realize what things we can control and what things we can't control. So, you know, if the patient doesn't follow directions, is that our fault? Should we be going back and, um, you know, refunding the patient money or redoing the case for free? No, of course not. If the patient's biology or physics, their musculature is not favorable for our treatment, that's not our fault. There's certain things that we should take credit for and we should take blame for, which would be like surgical technique. Did we follow up with the patient? Did we use the correct materials? Did we use the correct techniques? Other than that, we can't control everything else. And so what I did incorrectly early in my career was that I took blame for everything. And so everything for me was like, whether the patient followed directions or not, I took the blame for it. Whether the patient's host response was favorable or not, I took the blame for it. And it ended up causing me a lot of stress. And many of you have heard about the, the hard times that I went through in our profession. So one of the big things, and, and this is something that I think in medicine they think of oftentimes, but in dentistry we don't think about, which is host response. You know, not every patient is going to have the same reaction. Even if you, as the doctor, do the same thing every time, and you may be, you know, a world leader, an expert in something, and many of, of my mentors are world leaders and they still have failures. They still have complications. And so to think that everybody you see on the podium doesn't have complications really is bullshit. Um, and I think the, the true educators like Joseph Kahn are the ones that are real, are the ones that say, you know, I can do this 10 times the exact same way, but you know, one and a half of those times, the, the suture is gonna open up, the bone graft's gonna get infected, the implant's not gonna be stable, the aesthetics aren't gonna be great, there's gonna be 
you know, a gingival margin discrepancy, the, the occlusion won't be perfect. And so I think just understanding that can allow many doctors and especially young doctors to give themselves a break a little bit and know that every time you do something, it's not gonna be perfect. And, you know, the other aspect of that is talking to your patients about this. I think early in my career, I focused too much on the successes of, of my treatment and talking to the patients about the successes of my treatment instead of really focusing my, my conversation with the patient on the possible complications. I focus too much on, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna do this and it's gonna be great and it's gonna look fantastic and you know, it's gonna feel just like natural teeth. And then if something, you know, oftentimes that's how it was, but you know, two out of those 10 times, it didn't work out like that. And that's really where all my stress came from. All my stress came from those complication patients. The ones that I told everything was gonna be okay and in hindsight, I should have been focusing on the fact that this is what can happen, you know, the implant can fall out, you can get infected, the adjacent teeth can get infected or come out, the gingival margin may not be great, the bite's gonna be weird, you're gonna to have to wear these kind of temporaries for two years, etc. I should have been focusing so much on talking with the patients about complications and also the fact that if complications happen and it's not something that I attribute that I did wrong, you're gonna have to pay for it again. And this is the idea of revisions, again, that we, that we talk about in my light side course, that in medicine, they have this idea about revisions. And in dentistry, it's just called failures. And I, I hate that because we're doing our best. You can do everything right and still have to do revisions. So uh, there's a question, do you talk about your failures prior to the start of treatment or once the treatment has started? So I used to not talk about it much. And nowadays with patients, I spend a lot of time discussing possible complications uh, revisions that may need to be done. In addition, talking to them about the cost of those. So bringing up front the fact that if there's revisions, if there's complications, there's a cost associated with that. Because I think too many times, factors that are out of our hands, us doctors tend to take as our fault. And we're, again, putting our, our overhead, our, our experience, our energy into this. And, you know, we end up being in the hole on many of these cases that really a lot of it is out of our fault. Now, if you did something wrong, if you put the wrong material in, if you didn't get the right um, isolation, et cetera, et cetera, then, yeah, of course, you can take blame for that and you can uh, go back and, and do that for free for the patient. But I don't think that can always happen. You know, when you think of our colleagues in medicine, if you have a car accident and you get a surgery, and let's say not everything is right with the surgery, and you have to go back a few years later and do a revision surgery, do you pay for it again? Yeah, of course. You don't just, they don't, the surgeon doesn't just say, oh yeah, okay, well, let's just do it again. You know, I'll take care of it. I'll pay for the hospital. I'll pay for the assistance. I'll pay for all the sutures and all the bone grabbing. No, the doctor makes you pay for it again. And I think that's something that is an unfortunate problem in dentistry is the fact that the doctor is all to blame on every aspect. So that's what I'm trying to get across is talking with your patients before you do a treatment 
and making them understand that there could be complications, there may be complications, and I almost say there will be complications. You know, I try to under-promise and over-deliver now so that there's open communication and the patient accepts this. Now, if nothing happens, you look like a hero, right? Oh my gosh, Dr. Stanley, you told me that the implant was gonna fall out and it was gonna get infected and I wasn't gonna look good. And it ended up looking fine and I'm very happy, thank you. You look like a hero. However, if the complication does happen, the patient comes back understanding that this was a possibility and knowing that it's not necessarily your fault. And so you can talk to your patients and say things like, okay, Mr. Jones, I just finished this procedure. I think I did, you know, as best as I could, let's say 90% of what I could do in my hands, I was happy with this. At this point, a lot of it is up to you, okay? I need you to follow directions. I need you to have your diet correct. I need you to take the medications that I gave you. I need you to chew on the other side. I need you to not play with it. You know, when you're cleaning, make sure you do this, this, this. And then there's also some other factors that we just can't control. Like we don't know how your genetics are. We don't know how your physics of your, your musculature and your bones come together. Some of that we just can't control. So let's see how it goes. And you know, I'll see you in two weeks, whatever. But just being open with the patient, I think is, is so important. I mean, not only in dentistry, in life. But um, you know, I posted that, that case this week. So if you haven't seen it, go see it. It is a, a central incisor that I had some complications on, difficult case. And um, you know, I learned a lot from that case and many other cases like it. So stay tuned, I'll be posting more complications so that you guys can see that Instagram is oftentimes people's highlight reels and not always real life. So I want to start showing more real life so that many of you feel comfortable discussing your complications, discussing difficulties you may have, because this is the practice of dentistry. Not everything we do is perfect. We try our best. Most dentists that I know are kind, caring, passionate people, but we're human. And guess what? Humans aren't perfect. I mean, this is why I love AI. You guys know that I like AI so much. Humans aren't perfect. And, you know, even if you do the same thing a hundred times, it's not always consistent. And you're working on humans who aren't, who aren't consistent. So you have two imperfect people trying to do something and make it perfect. Of course, we're gonna have complications. Of course, we're gonna have difficulties. So, um, you know, it was a beautiful day. I wanted to just sit outside here in Palm Springs and uh, say hello to everybody and thanks for the messages and keep the positivity up. I've got my light side, my next light side course is starting in May. We moved it up. We were gonna do June, we moved it up because we had a lot of you guys messaging us saying, I don't wanna wait till June. So thank you, um, stay tuned. I'll be talking about it more. I'll be bringing on more light siders to talk about topics like this. Hope you guys feel better and uh, have a stress-free Sunday. Go uh, have, have fun with whatever your purpose in life is. Bye-bye.